Welcome back to Quantum Mechanics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so in this video, we're going to do an extension of the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, and you normally cover this um, at some point into about halfway into quantum mechanics, and that's determining whether or not two operators commute sometimes called commutation of operators. And we're going to do one example in this video and then a second example in the next video. So what does it mean for two operators to commute? When two operators commute, the order of operation on the wave function does not matter. Okay? And remember, if the order of operation on a wave function doesn't matter, that means those two corresponding observables for those operators can be known simultaneously. Okay? But if you have two operators that do not commute, then the order of operation does matter, in which case the observables that correspond to those two non-commuting operators, they cannot be known simultaneously and are subject to the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. So the most basic way to state the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, recall, was that you cannot know the position and the momentum of a particle simultaneously, the position and the momentum. So really the operators for position and momentum would not commute. Okay, they would be non-commuting operators. Um, and we have a way that we can show up here whether or not two operators commute or do not commute. And so what we have is a hat and b hat. Let's suppose these are our two operators. So in this bracket notation like this, if we have a hat comma b hat and that equals zero, this is notation to denote that we have two operators that do commute. Now that does mean we can know the observables of these two operators a and b simultaneously, but in mathematical terms over here, what it means is that if I have a wave function xi, I can operate first with b hat, this operator, and then whatever result I get for that, I can then operate with a, or I can first operate on the wave function with A, and then whatever comes out of that, I can then operate with B. So what I'm showing here is that the order does not matter because whichever direction you go first, A or B, you get the same result, okay? Those are two commuting operators. Now let's suppose A and B do not commute. The way I would denote that is the same way, so in this bracket notation, A hat comma B hat, but it does not equal zero, okay? Meaning, if I were to first operate on the wave function xi with b hat, okay, and then operate with a, it would not give me the same result as if I first operate on the wave function with a hat and then b hat, okay? And so if you're asked to determine whether or not you can, let's say, know two observables simultaneously, or just plain asked whether or not two operators commute, then what you have to do is set up an equation just like this. Okay, so I'm going to show you actually how to calculate this and determine whether or not two operators commute. We're going to look at the kinetic energy operator and the, and the momentum in the x direction operator. Okay, we want to know whether these two operators commute. And so I have to know what the operator is. For kinetic energy, it's negative h bar squared over 2m times the second derivative with respect to x. Okay, and then the momentum operator in the x direction is negative i h bar times the first derivative with respect to x. All right, and what I should get is if I operate first with the momentum operator and then with the kinetic energy operator, if they commute, that should be the same as first operating with the kinetic energy operator and then with the momentum operator. So notice in this, what I've done is I'm actually operating in uh, different orders. All right, so I'm first going to operate on the left side with the momentum operator. So this would just be the simple first derivative of xi with respect to x. I can just basically take this and write d xi dx. Again, the negative i h bar is still multiplied out in front of d xi dx. All right, it's just as simple as that. All right, and then I'm going to keep all this out in front of here. The second derivative with respect to x of all this times negative h bar squared over 2m. All right. Now what I can do is I can now pull all the constants out in front of the derivative, the second derivative that is, okay? So I'm gonna pull this negative i h bar out in front, and so what that's gonna give me is my negative h bar squared over 2m, and then multiplied by negative i h bar, all right? And now that means I'm gonna be taking the second derivative with respect to x of the first derivative of xi with respect to x, all right? 
And now if I go down here and group all the constants on the left side, okay, I'm going to have these negative signs cancel, so it's going to be positive overall. The i can come out in front. I should have an h bar cubed divided by 2m. And then if I take the second derivative with respect to x of the first derivative of xi with respect to x, you can sort of think of adding the exponents on the derivatives, 2 plus 1, so it's going to be the third derivative of xi with respect to x. So my left side in total is i h bar cubed over 2m times the third derivative of xi with respect to x. Now, if I do the right side of all of this, and these two operators are to commute, then I should get the same thing. You can kind of already see that I do, but I'm going to go ahead and work it out just to show you. So on the right side here, now I am operating first on the wave function with the kinetic energy operator, and then I'm going to use the momentum operator. So when I do this, um, it's pretty straightforward. It just becomes the second derivative of xi with respect to x. So I group in that right here, and I have these constants out in front of that. Negative h bar squared divided by 2m. All right, so that's as simplified as that's going to get. But now I have to operate now with the momentum operator. And so now I'm going to take the first derivative with respect to x of all this. Well, what I can do is take all the constants and move them out front just like I did before. So this negative h bar squared over 2m is going to come out in front with the negative i h bar, as you see right here. Negative i h bar times negative h bar squared over 2m. And when I move this first derivative in here, it's going to be the first derivative with respect to x of the second derivative of xi with respect to x. And in the same way as before, okay, you can essentially think of adding the exponents of these derivatives, 1 and 2. And so it's going to be, if I combine these constants, the negative signs cancel. I have an i h bar times h bar squared is h bar cubed over 2m, and now times the third derivative of xi with respect to x. Now you look at both of these, the left and the right side, and you notice that they're identical. Okay? And they have to be identical. And if they are identical, then what we can say is that these two operators for kinetic energy and for momentum in the x direction, these two operators commute. Okay? And what that means more of an, in an understandable way is that the corresponding observable, so the kinetic energy of the particle and the momentum of the particle in the x direction, those two observables can be known simultaneously. Okay, so this is really the first case where we have two variables that commute. And so if I wanted to write it in this notation right here, I'd have in brackets here the kinetic energy operator, comma, the momentum in the x direction operator equals zero. And because they equal zero, meaning it's the same on the left side as the same on the right side, they commute. And so I can know the kinetic energy of the particle and the momentum in the x direction of the particle simultaneously. All right. So that's an example of how you determine whether or not two operators commute. And really the general way you can be asked this on an exam most likely is going to be directly determine if these two operators commute or a yes or no question, can you know these two, uh, the corresponding observables at the same time or simultaneously? And that's sort of a kind of a hidden question where you actually have to do this process. Okay, so hopefully this made sense. In the next video, we're going to do a second example of this, but we're going to see in this one two that do not commute. All right, and so make sure to join us there. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.